<laughs> All right, well, I have a few, and, hel and hello to our television audience. <clears throat> I just have a few notes, and they're not going to be very long. But one of the things I wanted to talk to our group about today is moving, I, th I think the live chat format was adopted because we couldn't have people in this room. And um, now we can have a fair number of people in the room. It's set up and I think we could honestly fit some more people in here. Um, so I'm thinking that we might want to move away from the live chat format and maybe back towards um, more like a monthly, I've called it a director's dialogue in the past. I think our uh, community here has called it something else in the past, but um, that kind of thing. I think, it'll, I think it would be wise for us to stream that um, so that everybody who's not able to come uh, and uh, are these recorded and played later? Okay, so we should keep doing that. We should keep streaming it and keep recording it so people can see it later, but give people an opportunity to come in and, and, uh, and sit, which you could do now, um, but um, I think that might be a way for us to move forward. And, I'm, and it helps me, honestly, because I'm used to having a, a screen um, where I can put some of the bullet points of things that I'm saying on the screen and so you can see it and this is easier I think for people to see it and hear it at the same time. <clears throat> so I think it might be more effective um, for us to do it in that way. Um, so we'll be thinking about that. I don't want to, one of the things that I said when I interviewed for the job was well, you don't want to come in you know with your guns blazing changing everything right, right away but it seems like um, we've moved in the pandemic to a place where we might be able to get to something that feels a little more normal and, and I just feel like it might be effective for my style to be able to have a PowerPoint um, and people be able to see that. So, so we'll start thinking about that. No, no firm, but you'll, you'll be hearing something more firm about it in the near future. Is it fair enough to leave it that way? Okay. Um, the other thing that I really like to do, this is, this is my style, is, is education. Um, I'm a big fan of trying to do regular, not so formalized, but an emphasis on educational things that we can do with, with independent living and assisted living and nursing residents. So we can do it in a room like this one and you can stream it and record it. Um, but things that might be of interest to you, not done by me, thankfully, you don't <laughs> have to listen to me do it, but subject matter experts. So as an example, I'm a big fan and, and the community I serve for 18 years, uh, we did every year something called Continuing Care 101, where we just talked about the continuum of care, transitioning between levels of care, because, you know, as people just forget and people, new people move in, they just want to learn a little bit more about how those kinds of things work. We also have Affirmation Health with us and we've talked about this health safety net and my uh, impression is that people are still a little confused about exactly what we mean when we say that. And so I was talking with Florence about maybe we can do a series. Maybe it's five or six in a series once a month or something like that. And we can just introduce this education sort of element and we can have a free ranging discussion about those types of things. The Medicare uh, household will be coming soon. And I feel like it might be good to get ahead of that and start talking about Medicare with you. How does that work? Medicare Part A, what is it? What's covered, what's not covered? What if I have an Advantage plan? How many Advantage plans do we have? Those kinds of things we need to start thinking about. And so I think if you're more educated about it the day that it comes, um, it'll probably just save me a lot of time on the back end of having to explain it in the heat of the moment if you're a little more familiar with it up front. So those kinds of things and maybe talk about some CapEx projects but that's an element that I'm used to doing and I'd like to try to do here. I'm not saying they'll be effective. <laughs> I'm just saying that I like to do it. And if, if it turns out that they're somewhat effective, um, then that'll be a plus two. Uh, memory garden. So part of the building of the memory or the rebuilding of the memory care household involves a courtyard that's just outside of that second floor household. I think it's been called something else in the past, but I've referred to it now as a memory, as the memory care garden. And so that's a project that is being done and it is going to start 
pretty soon. Um, I think that all the permits have been pulled for it and all the contracts are currently now in the process of being signed with uh, James River Nurseries is going to do a lot of the installation and there's an electrician who will do some work there too. A gazebo has been ordered for it and, and so a lot of the concrete will be torn out and the current gazebo will be torn out and, um, and that work is going to start fairly soon and, we'll, and we're, we hope that by mid-April um, the project will be complete. We have to have uh, a clear path of egress from the memory care unit or household on the second floor out in case of fire out to a safe place so in order to open that we have to be able to demonstrate that we have a clear path of egress so that element has to be done um, in the first week of April um, so that's coming and we can talk more about that there is a dumpster um, this, that Horrigan the construction company has been parked in a certain place as they've been doing their work well, they're going to finish their work and they're going to move that dumpster to its next location. But unfortunately, James River is going to come in with another dumpster and put it in the same place. But I asked the fellow today, and he told me it's about 30 days. It just needs to be there for the demo work, and then it can go away after that. So it's about 30 days once one dumpster moves, another one will come and it'll stay there for about a month. And then after that, it should be free of a dumpster. Uh, carpet in independent living. I have just recently learned that we are replacing carpet on the third floor and the fourth floor of the independent living buildings. And I am told that that work should begin sometime in the May time frame. It could be April. But I think given supply chain issues, it'd be a lot safer to say May. So we're gonna say May. Um, and that project will be happening on the third and fourth floors. And as it gets closer and we learn more about specific dates, I'll be sure to communicate that to you. I'll probably do that in writing to the affected floors in a memo format, just so you have it. Is that okay? Okay. Lightning rod project. Is everybody familiar with the lightning rod project? Okay. So apparently our building is a lightning rod for lightning. And what uh, we have put in our budget is to put in some lightning protection. And there are three phases to this lightning protection project. One of the phases has to do with protecting the, the cooling tower which is over by the admin entrance. And also a piece of HVAC equipment, is, the manufacturer is DICON, so everybody just refers to it as the DICON equipment. Apparently those pieces of equipment are particularly vulnerable to lightning strikes. And so the first phase is gonna be protecting those pieces of equipment. Because when it strikes, it burns up circuits and motors and it's a real problem for us, uh, apparently. So that's gonna be phase one. And that contract for phase one got signed yesterday and the contractor has it. And that work is supposed to take place uh, during the month of May. Okay. I'm sorry, March. That's supposed to occur in March. And I don't think anybody's gonna be overly affected by that phase. You might see it, but it won't affect you. Phase two and three are designed to protect all the buildings from lightning strike. And that's gonna be uh, divided into two phases. One of those phases is gonna to be to run cables from the roofs down into the ground rods. There'll be 92 of those around all the buildings, licensed and independent living, everything. There'll be 92 of those rods where the charge will be dispersed into the ground. Um, and that phase is yet to be uh, timed, but it'll be happening on the heels of the other. But I'll tell you more about that as I learn more about it. And the third phase is setting up those little poles on the corners of the buildings, and there'll be many of those as well. And that'll be the end of the project. So lightning is supposed to be attracted to that pole and be dispersed down into the ground and not do any harm to the building. I think it's a pretty tried and true technology. 
Um, so that's going to be happening. I know that the, the chiller and the daikon is going to happen in March. The other parts of it I'm not sure yet, um, but I'll let you know as the days get closer so you won't wonder who in the world is outside your window putting up poles. And apparently they'll do most of this work with a bucket lift. They'll bring a truck with a bucket lift and that's how they'll do most of the work. Okay. Uh, next to last thing is reopening and you received a memorandum from me on Monday or Tuesday um, that was outlining some of the additional steps we've taken to reopen the community and again I don't want to sound like a broken record but I think we're in a phase of this pandemic as it nears an endemic uh, status that we all have some personal responsibility that we have to exercise as we judge our own health uh, and risk situations that we find ourselves in. Um, so we all have to do that. Um, and we were talking this morning in, the, in the, our leadership meeting that I think we might be better if I was to communicate to you things that are still restricted as opposed to things that are opening because I think we flipped the balance. Most things are open um, and there's only a few restrictions really. So I think we'd be better just to talk about the restrictions. I think it'd be easier for you to digest um, in that way. So um, probably in the future we'll begin to talk in those kinds of terms. And that is almost all I have. I have one more thing that uh, Mr. Myers handed to me. Um, Mr. Myers and I had a conversation about the DOS uh, system, which is the fresh air return system that's been in the, in the buildings. And um, we've talked uh, at length about that. <clears throat> uh, one of the things that Mr. Myers and I had an opportunity to discuss with Chris Henderson and with Michael Shaw is that it's Cedarfield, I mean, it's Cedarfield and it's Pinnacle's position that the DOS has been thoroughly uh, studied and has found to be working as it is intended to work. And so the, 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 the general belief is that we're just not going to spend tons more time talking about it. And I had a chance to say to Mr. Myers at that time, you know, if you, if you want to bring it up in a public setting, I just want to let you know now that I'm probably not going to address it um, because we just got told by Chris Henderson that we're not going to spend a bunch of time on it. Now, Mr. H Mr. Myers has handed me, and I don't mean to sound, and I don't mean to sound disrespectful in any way at all. It's not my intention. Uh, but uh, Mr. Myers handed me a note. It's a, a, it's a page, and it, and it says that the DOS evaluated, and we, oh, He's quoting that the DOS has been evaluated and we believe it is working as intended. And he's saying, please define intended for common area space for apartments and independent living. Did Pinnacle Living Cedarfield contact various manufacturers for DOS HVAC equipment to determine if they had any new recommended filter changes because of COVID? He's saying, and he has many quotes from past meetings uh, that say things like low humidity has been identified in various parts of the building and that's from a memo to management. Uh, to, in responding to him. Uh, another quotation is more importantly humidity levels in other areas of the corridor particularly near the end of B wing were unacceptable levels and this came from the ACES humidification study for the Hermitage at Cedarfield. Um, another is a design goal was supposed to design to maintain an RH in the apartments of less than 50%. The DOS was designed to maintain RH in the apartments of not less than 40%. The DOS is not performing as intended. And he's taking that from a facilities committee report from the residence council. A report was neither questioned nor disputed by management. Uh, despite these ongoing adjustments, is another quotation, uh, we continue to experience humidity inconsistencies in the residences, which is not acceptable. And that came from a memorandum dated May 19, 2017. Another quotation is one of the committee's major concerns with the unacceptable humidity levels. And so, um, I've done just what I said I wasn't going to do, but I'm not going to do it again. Um, the DOS is working as it's intended, and it's not a subject that we're going to discuss anymore. And, I, and as far as I'm concerned, that's the end of the topic. Yes, Mr. Myers, you have a question. I have to go through all of that because I just had the one request and the one question. I still want to know what is the definition for intent because when they come up with their figures from the uh, balancing group of uh, Humidity, no, humidity, 
question is, where are those figures from? I don't think anyone other than his administration uh, management has seen basically any of the reports. And uh, as indicated, the only report that has been made available is one that I have seen, and that is the one from ACES, which indicated uh, <coughs> uh, the uh, unacceptable levels for the relative humidity. Other than that, within the common areas and the apartments, I don't think any readings have ever been taken. Mm -hmm. So the readings that you get from somewhere in the DOS system or the air handling system is not what gets into the common areas and or the apartments. And we are interested in the common areas and the apartments and not what happens somewhere uh, before the air handling system. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Dodd, it's for- It's still an mm -hmm. issue and I think you basically, you as management, yes. are glossing over the fact the system is not working for all people in order to keep a relative humidity consistent with, like that first question, about 43 degrees, 43 percent, sorry, relative humidity for the minimum viral infection. Okay. Mr. Myers, for our television audience who didn't hear any of that, um, I just want to be sure that to repeat for everyone that Mr. Myers just gave a long uh, response and basically it boils down to what do you mean, what, how do you define intended to work and he rejects the idea that it's working um, as it's intended and as I just said we're just not going to talk about the DOS system anymore. Yeah. I'm going to go one step further and disregard all the percentages and all the data and everything else and just look at it from a perspective of humidity equates to health. Is Cedarfield saying we don't care about your health? No. I think what we're I think what I'm understanding is that it's been studied and found that this working as is intended to work. Uh, yeah. What do we get in the common areas? Yeah. Not thirty five percent minimum humidity. Mm -hmm. If you want to say that, then again I have quote trust in management. Understand. Mr. Myers is saying that he does not trust management. That's correct. Other questions? Really, any question on any topic other than the DOS in our assembled group here? <laughs> Eleanor, are there any topics that have come in? Uh, no, but we did receive some uh, in an email I printed out for you. Oh, you did? I don't know that I have that. Okay. You have it? Apparently there was a question that came in about cleaning up after dogs. Okay. From uh, Jacqueline Chaplin, who says, please remind people to pick up after their dog. Please caution people about dropping their masks indoors and out. No one wants to pick them up. Oh, I see. No one shouldn't drop their mask on the ground, either indoors or outdoors. Who is paying for the repair of the tunnel? And why was another television purchase for the Atrium Cafe? We could have watched the Super Bowl on the screen in the Fellowship Hall. We could have paid for a minimally 33 hours of employees and salary in lieu of this expense. So for number one and two, which are statements, we've made those. Number three is who's paying for the repair of the tunnel. Uh, Cedarfield is paying for the repair of the tunnel. Um, it's out of our CapEx budget to repair the tunnel is my understanding of it. Why was another television purchased for the Atrium Cafe? And it's my understanding from David this morning, I thought he said he borrowed the TV and it was not an expense. <clears throat> so he borrowed the TV from, from a friend, I think he said? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. Okay. Yes, there's a question in the back. If you would, if you would come up to the microphone, then our, te our television audience could hear you better. Sally Wood. Um, Mr. Sheldon told us the 
tunnel is under warranty. Okay. So just, okay. I don't know if that's all right. right or not. Well, all right, let's do this. Let me confirm where the, where the, well, who's paying for it, and I'll get back with you. Either at another one of these meetings or I'll communicate to you in writing. I think it may be a two phase situation. The park from the pond down is one phase, and more than likely we are paying for that. But the part that is involving the leak in the tunnel itself should be the builder that built that being paid or should have to pay for that. I'll find out and let you all know. It's a good question. I don't know the answer. Other questions on any topic? Yes, Mr. Rucker. Yeah. Is, the, uh, is there some concern also when I'm thinking of the carpeting issue, the third and fourth, we are hopeful third. For example, this room is used quite a bit, so I assume there has to be a, some kind of a schedule of when it can and can't be used if you've got to do the work in here. I just, I assume that's part of the project. Yes. Yeah, I, I think what you're asking, Mr. Rucker, is um, if when the carpet is laid, it'll interrupt operations for certain um, uh, amenities that we enjoy. And so we'll need to think about how to communicate when those will be open and closed. It's a, it's a good point. Thank you. And we will do that. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and stopping by. And I don't know when I'll see you again in this format, but we'll we'll decide what the next what the next format will be. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. We have to be taken out with a, a word of prayer. Gosh, I'm gonna get struck by lightning. I should get some lightning protection. Today is just a happy poem. Okay. Hi everyone, um, I'm Margaret Erstis and I'm very proud to represent Pastoral Services today. And I'm always excited when I get a chance to come in and help close out the program. Uh, some of you might know that I read a lot. Um, so when I accidentally stumble on something that I think might be particularly uplifting for this setting, I like to put it aside and, and uh, bring it back um, to share in this portion. But this morning I saw, just by happenstance, a short poem. It's by Helen Steiner Rice, and she writes a lot of things, but she also might be familiar in that she writes um, uh, card sentiments, greeting card sentiments, sympathy, thinking of you, things like that. So I have a short poem by her called A Sure Way to a Happy Day. Happiness is something we create in our mind. It's not something you search for and so seldom find. It's just waking up and beginning the day by counting our blessings and kneeling to pray. It's growing, it's giving up thoughts that breed discontent and accepting what comes as a gift heaven sent. It's giving up wishing for things we have not and making the best of whatever we've got. It's knowing that life is determined for us and pursuing our tasks without fret, fume, or fuss. It's by completing what God gives us to do that we find true contentment and happiness too. Thank you all, have a great rest of your day.